Hey everyone, it's Lee here at Griffith again, and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about something called feline diabetic neuropathy, and also about diabetes in a feline patient. We recently had a cat that was left to us here at the clinic, and he is diabetic, so we've been treating him for his diabetes with daily insulin. And I just kind of wanted to go over the signs of diabetes and then also giving an insulin injection. What you might notice um, in your cat, I'm kind of going to gear it towards cats today since that's uh, what we're talking about is our cat here. Um, what you'll notice in cats when they are symptomatic of diabetes, you may notice them drinking more, urinating more, um, eating more. They can be overweight. Any of these signs, go ahead, make an appointment with your veterinarian. Diabetes is pretty easy to diagnose in the beginning. And then it's just a matter of getting on a good maintenance dose of insulin for you and the right type of insulin for your cat. There are different types of insulins and different sizes of insulin syringes, and that's something that you and your veterinarian can talk about and decide at the time. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the insulin handling. It does need to stay refrigerated, and you never shake insulin, but you do have to mix it every time you give it. So what we like to do, you can either um, take the bottle and turn it up and down like that, or if it's easier for you, you can roll it in your hands. That kind of mixes it and warms it at the same time. Usually with insulin, it's a very small needle and a small amount that you're giving. So the cat doesn't really even know that they're getting it. Another good trick before you give the injection is to get a plate of food ready for your cat. Go ahead and put it in front of them. Let them eat while you're giving the insulin injection. That solves two problems. One, it keeps them busy so they don't pay attention to what you're doing. And two, they always have to have a meal with an insulin injection to level out that blood sugar. So that solves that problem right there. They're already eating and ready to go. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get this insulin ready. I'm gonna show you how we draw it up in the syringe. And then I'm gonna get doorstep in here, that's our cat, doorstep, and show you how to give it. So when you get your insulin syringe, they will usually have two caps on them, one at the base and one covering the needle. Just go ahead and pop off the one at the base, like that, and then go ahead and pop off the one covering the needle. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see from there, but I'll get a close up for you. It's a very small needle. And it's just like, any, if you have experience with any injections, it's just like any other injection. You just pierce the top of the bottle with the needle, draw up the amount that you need, and doorstep's on a very small dose, so it's going to be hard to see um, exactly that there's really anything in the syringe for him. But the dose is something that you'll work out with your veterinarian anyway, and it'll be specific to your cat. So I'm just going to show you how to draw it up and how to give it. Basically, I recap my needle, and then go ahead and get your cat ready with this food. And I'm going to go get doorstep and get him ready, and we'll be right back to give the injection. So this is doorstep. I have his little plate of food here and his insulin injection ready to go. We've already drawn it up. They do recommend with cats that you give your insulin injection over the rib cage area. If that's an issue for you, if there's some reason that it's easier for you to give it in the hips or the shoulders, then that's okay to do. This is sort of a new recommendation, a new study that they say it's better absorbed over the rib cage area. So that might be something you want to talk to your veterinarian about if you're concerned about where to give the injection. <clears throat> they also recommend moving it around, so don't give it in one place every time. If you think about it, you, you may be doing it twice a day, and you don't want to use the exact same spot because he'll build up a sore there. So you want to just move it around his ribcage area. So I'm going to go ahead and give him his food, and then we'll get the camera a little bit closer up so you can see how we give the injection. So all I have to do here is just over his ribcage, I'm going to tint the skin just a little bit, and it's such a small needle that I don't have to grab a whole lot of, a whole lot of skin, and I'm just going to push the needle in his skin and you can feel it break the surface. 
and then inject. Push my plunger down and inject it. Here, sweetie. And then just offer them the food as a reward, and there he's going to go back to his food. Some things you want to look out for if they get um, a little bit uh, low glucose, they can be lethargic, um, not wanting to eat. I'm going to put him down. But they can be lethargic, not wanting to eat, not wanting to socialize. They can be hiding. Um, anything like that. Sometimes they'll just sort of collapse and, you know, not really be responsive at all. If anything like that ever happens, you want to get them to your veterinarian right away because that can be a sign of a low glucose and they'll need medical intervention. I know we've been talking about cats today because we have doorstep here as a good model. But really all of these um, directions, instructions, symptoms will apply to dogs as well. Also, just to let you know, I'm going to insert a clip of doorstep walking. He has a funny gait in his rear. What that's called is feline diabetic neuropathy. That's what happens when diabetes goes untreated and that the high glucose levels will cause nerve damage in cats. It's really just a feline symptom. You don't see it in dogs. But I thought it'd be interesting just to show his gait a little bit and let you see kind of how that looks. As always, this video is not intended to diagnose your cat in any way. If you feel that your cat is exhibiting some of the symptoms that we've talked about, please call your veterinarian and make an appointment. As always, if you have any questions or would like to see any other videos or tutorials, just leave a comment in the comment bar below. And thanks for watching. Bye.